Hi everybody, Deb Tucker here. Uh, welcome to another Thursday Tip and Tricks. We're gonna follow along with our theme of strip piecing. If you joined us last week, we talked about pressing strip sets that had already been cut and already been sewn and how important it is to keep those strip sets nice and straight when you're at the ironing station. But today I'm gonna share with you something that I do at the sewing machine when I'm doing stitching. I love to do this when I'm doing stitch um, strip piecing and uh, I thought it would be fun for you to give it a try with your next round. So uh, to so show you this, we're gonna need to get up and close the, uh, to the sewing machine. So we're gonna need to do a little reposition here. Sarah's gonna reposition the camera. I'm gonna bring this board in right here so we can talk about what it is I, I hope to show you. and. Basically what I'm gonna do, or what I do, is I set up a masking tape guide. And if you've been at quilting for a while, uh, you may have heard some other people talk about that, but most of the time when they're talking about masking tape guides, people will say to just put down a single layer. Well, that's not good enough. What I wanna do is create a ledge with my masking tape that I'm gonna be able to bump my fabric right up against. So that's the first thing that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take masking tape and use a painter's tape, decent quality, uh, tear your strips or cut your strips, eh, maybe at least six inches long, but anywhere up to about 12 inches long, and then layer them, one on top of the next, on top of the next. It doesn't matter if the edges match, it doesn't matter if the ends match. You're just simply making a small ledge for you to be able to bump your fabric up against. Four layers is good, five or six is probably even a little bit better. Now, try as you might, I can guarantee you, this edge is not lined up straight. Doesn't happen for anybody. So the first thing after I layered my strips, I'm gonna come back with a used blade on a rotary cutter, and I'm gonna trim one of that edges, one of those edges. Doesn't matter how much you trim away. We've got a, a, little, a little bit that I've trimmed away here, um, because all that I'm worried about is having a nice straight edge for bumping up my fabric, to use to guide my fabric. After I've trimmed the edge, the next thing about two thirds of the way, a little bit that will go behind the needle and some that will be in front of the needle, I'm gonna do a little cutout in the um, masking tape. And I do that with a craft knife or an X-Acto knife. And again, doesn't have to be exact, it's about an inch, but just dig that out so that when I go to position this underneath my presser foot, my presser foot isn't accidentally sitting on that ledge of tape that would cause my my strips to feed through like driving a car out of alignment. They would always be pulling off to one side. So that's when I, I do that little cut out there. And then I'm going to need a piece of graph paper. And I'm gonna take the graph paper and I'm gonna trim it right along one edge. And that's what I'm gonna to use to help me set up my, my seam allowance. Now, before we get into the actual setup of this, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about uh, one of the benefits of just setting up your own seam allowance guide here. Uh, scant quarter of an inch, you've heard about it. What exactly does that mean? If this were graph paper, and if these were quarter of an inch segments here, and I was going to put my needle down, which I'm going to do, and I put my needle down right on the line so that half of the hole that I make with the needle is on one side, of the line and half is on the other, that would be a true exact one quarter of an inch seam. A scant quarter of an inch, I've seen students come up with an eighth of an inch seam and say, that's my scant quarter of an inch. No, that's not what they mean with the, when we're talking about a scant quarter of an inch. What we're talking about is sewing with a, a line of stitching that's gonna be one thread shy of a true quarter of an inch. And so when I put my needle down, what I'm gonna shoot for is dropping my needle down so that the edge of the needle is gonna to be touching the line. Not gonna go right through the middle, but the edge so that I'm actually gonna be stitching one thread shy of a true quarter of an inch. Now, let's see if I can actually do that. Move this out of the way. I'm taking the graph paper that's been trimmed, sliding it underneath, and I'm gonna take the needle, and I'm gonna poke it where I think it should be. And once I've got it poked, I'm going to bring it out, whoops, let's get it up out of there so we don't tear the paper, and take a look. Oh. And what I see, I don't know if you can see it up close and personal, that is pretty darn close to exactly where I want it to be. That 
left hand side of the hole is right up against the line and that's going to give me that scant quarter of an inch. Now, if I was sewing with a heavier weight fabric like a flannel, I might need to actually go a little bit narrower, a little bit smaller or narrower seam allowance than what I've done right there. So let's take this again. I'm going to reinsert the needle in the hole that I just placed in there. The next thing that I'm going to do is drop the presser foot to hold it into place. Make sure that the graph paper is underneath there straight so that you're not setting up your seam guide crooked underneath. Set it up so that it's about as straight as you can get it. Then you're gonna come with your masking tape guide and you're gonna position the gap that you trimmed out underneath the presser foot so that you'll have a guide at the back and you're also gonna have your masking tape guide in front of the needle. So you have it all the way in front. I actually make mine long enough that I can wrap it right around the edge of my fat or edge of my sewing table and give it a test. Set it up without looking at the line. I'm just bumping the, the, the paper right up against there. Take it out. This is another nice reason to have that grab paper there. I can see just like that. I am exactly where I want my uh, seam allowance to be for this particular project. So when I'm going to stitch my strips, I can simply take those strips. Normally I'd have a leader or an ender on there, but I'm gonna just start kind of right on the strip, give it a go. I can line those strips up miles before I actually have to put that under the needle. It's a quick, easy way to get high accuracy with your strip piecing and get a good accurate seam and piece your strips together quicker, faster, and better. Uh, now, this might not be for everybody, but you know, the more you try different ways to construct your quilts, different machine piecing techniques and processes, the more you're gonna be able to say, I really like that one, or no, that one's not for me. It doesn't cost very much money. Pull out a couple, a roll of masking tape and a piece of graph paper and you're good to go. I'd like you to give it a try for your next project, your next strip piecing project. You might even decide you like it for all your other piecing projects. Give it a try. Let me know what you think and come back and visit me next Thursday. We'll talk about something else that's interesting. See you then. Bye everybody.